Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to use the store value function. So we'll be looking at these broad categories first. I'll start by showing you the function signature of the store value function. Then I'll show you how to save data to the absolute store using the store value function. I'll show you how to read that data out, how to delete data in the store value function. And lastly, I'm going to show you a real world application which shows you or illustrates how to use the store value function in a real app. Are you excited for this? I'm sure you are. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so right here we are in a blank application or at least a blank page. And what we're going to do is build an echo application that would echo out whatever we type into an input widget. So let's go ahead to build this using the store value function. So I need to head over to the widgets and bring in an input widget. So here we have a nice input widget. I'm going to expand this. All right. We also need a text widget. So let's go bring in a text widget. This is going to be the display of the echo output. And that's basically all we need. So we want it such that whenever the input changes, we'll write the value into the store and have that displayed on the text widget right here. And for that, we need to use the store value function. So on the input widget, um, we have an on text change event. For this, we can go on to write a JavaScript code that actually uses the store value function. So this is going to be store value and that's basically the function we need to make use of. So for the function signature, this requires just two parameters and has a third optional parameter you can choose to pass in if you need to. So first is the key. That will be the identifier of the data saved into the AppSmith store. That's for the key. Next is the value. This can be any JavaScript value, be it a string, a number, an object, an array. All of the supported JavaScript data types can be used as a value for this parameter. And lastly, we have a Boolean flag to either allow persisting of the data that's after the application is closed or after the application is reloaded if we want that data persisted. So this is set to true by default. We can set this to off or turn it off by passing a false um, Boolean expression and that is going to turn it off. So this is the function signature of the store value function. Now let's go ahead to make use of this function. So to make use of this, I'm just going to clear everything we typed in out and let's actually pass in a key of text. Then a value would be the value of the input or text imputed into the input widget. So this is going to be input one dot text. All right. And that's all we largely need to do. We're going to leave the third parameter out because it's an optional parameter. So whenever I go type in something into the inputs, for example, typing in something, we actually have that text saved in the store, but you can't see it right now. So let's go ahead to display it so that you're able to see what we have saved. So here is the text widget. Uh, for the text property of the text widget, I'm just going to go ahead to read the data out um, by taking a look at what we have in the appsmith.store and then the exact key name, which is txt. And here we have something showing up. So if I say something is here, we can see that data is updated and we have the text widget displaying the exact information saved in the store. And I think this is really nice because it also makes it possible for you to update widget properties based on data saved in the store. So let me show you one quick example. Let's head back to the text widget and I can choose to set the text color to be based on whatever text value is saved in the store. So this can similarly come from appsmith.store.text. All right. And whenever I go type in a color right here, so let's say red, for example, we have a red color for the text. Um, we can say blue, for example, we have blue right here. We can say green and we have green right here. So it makes it easy to manipulate widget properties just by saving attributes in the store and reading them out from the store. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to delete keys in the store. To do this, I'm going to bring in a button widget. So let's go bring in a button widget. And this is actually fairly quite easy. So here we have a button widget. I'm just going to call this button the reset button. And when this button is clicked on, we want to delete the text key 
that is saved in the store. So to actually have that done, we also still need to use the store value function. And what we will be doing here is specifying the key we want to delete, which is text in this case, and then deleting it by setting its value to undefined. So you can do undefined, and that's just going to delete it whenever we click on the reset button. So we're going to click on the reset button, we can see that the store is cleared and we actually have no display output in the text widget. But the moment we go to type in something new here, for example, red, we have something back saved into the store and we can go ahead to delete it and have that cleared out. So this is a simple workflow of setting properties into the store, reading them out and also deleting items that are no longer required. Next, I'm going to show you how the store value function can be used in a real world application. So let me go ahead to show you this. Here I have a store page built out using a list widget and here we have a couple of products being displayed on the list widget. So we have a couple of electronics products. I can choose to add them to the cart. Whoa, I think I really love this um, ultra wide monitor. So I'm just going to add it to the cart. And here we have a notification saying the item has been added to the cart. Now I can go to the next category store page, which in this case is jewelries. Let's go check out for a jewelry I like. I think I really like this um, jewelry, so I'm going to add it to the cart. And I think that's good for jewelries. Now let's go on to the next category, which is the main clothing. By the way, taking a look at the page right here, you can see that we are navigating across pages. So we were coming from the electronics page, then we went to the jewelry page, and now we're in the men's clothing page. And I can go add this bag and this really cool t-shirt and jacket to my cart. So I have all of these items added to the cart. Lastly, we have the women's clothing page. And let's go add in one item from this page. So let's add this jacket. And we have that added, as you can see. Then we can go to the checkout page. And uh, taking a look at what we have in the checkout page, we actually have all of those items added to the cart from the previous page displayed on the checkout. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how is this built out? Of course, it was built out using the store value function. And I can show you how this is done by first taking a look at the table data property. You can see all of the information displayed on the table is actually being pulled from the store. We have a key called cart that has a list of these products that we added to the cart and all of that is being read from the AppSmith store. Now, we can head back to one of those pages. For example, we have the women's clothing page, and let me show you how all of this is put together. By the way, all of the pages are identical, so um, what I'm showing you here applies to all of the previous pages you just saw. So taking a look at the JavaScript file we have here, we have a cart file that has an add function that is triggered whenever you click on the green add to cart button. So this requires an item as an argument and what it does is it tries to put it into the cart from the apps store so it tries to do a check if the, there's a cart if no cart exists it defaults to an empty array and then pushes the item to the array and here's the step where we save it to the store we have this little addition here to make sure we have just unique items in the cart by using the Lodash library. Lodash is a dependency available on AppSmith and it's a really cool utility library that makes it so much easier for you to do nifty things using objects and arrays. So I highly encourage you to go check it out. All right, so we have that saved into the cart. And lastly, we show a message letting the user know that the item has been added to the cart. So it's really that easy. And of course, we have a clear function which actually resets the store whenever it is triggered. So this is how easy it is to use the store value function in real life. You can actually build complex workflows or manipulate widget properties using the store value function. I'd love to see what you come up with the store value function when you get the chance to try it out. Now, if you love to learn more about manipulating widget properties, we actually made a video right here that shows you exactly how to do that by using the store value function and writing JavaScript. And if you love to go in depth into writing JavaScript, we made a full video guide right here that shows you how to write JavaScript in AppSmith and use the JavaScript editor to write full page multi-line JavaScript files. All right, so that'll be all for today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to share them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.